Dear all, I would like to welcome you about this presentation, our webinar about shell freezing with the Rota Vapor. Uh, my name is Marco Muri. I'm the business area manager of formulation with Büchi in Switzerland. That means that me and my team were responsible for spray drying, encapsulation and freeze drying at Büchi. What I will like to show you on the next few slides today is what the impact of shell freezing with a rota vapor is for freeze drying samples. And we will mainly talk about samples for manifold applications. So like you can see it in the picture here. So you have a round bottom flask or another flask where your sample is located in and you would like to freeze dry that. How do you freeze or what is the best way to freeze your sample? In general, when we talk about freeze drying, freezing the sample is very important and to what temperature to freeze a sample is extremely important for the freeze drying process. Freeze drying samples are typically complex mixtures. They're either crystalline or amorphous and they're not so easily frozen as you would maybe expect. If we look at the example of a crystalline sample, so water and salt, simple. If we freeze this sample, and you can see this in the graph on the left side, we first go down in temperature. Then we go to an area that we call supercooling. That means the sample goes even below its freezing point. Then first crystals will be formed. The temperature slightly increases again and the sample crystallizes. It feel forms ice. This small peak we can see here is the freezing temperature of the sand. But now what's very important is the sample is now not completely frozen. We still have some solution and we have ice. If we would now freeze dry the sample, we would start with a partly melted sample and we would not end up with a nice cake of our product. So we want to cool it even further down. So we cool it even further. We see another small uh, negative peak and a slight increase. And at that temperature now for ice, uh, for water and salt at about minus 20 degrees, this is the so-called eutetic temperature. And after this point, so from here on and cooler, we will only have ice and salt. So what we need to make sure now is that our sample is frozen below this eutetic temperature to make sure we only work with ice and our sample. So now often household freezers are used for freezing the samples. They only go to about minus 18, minus 24 degrees. And this is usually not enough to really freeze your samples. So already one hint from me, if you use a freezer, please use at least a minus 40 degrees freezer to freeze dry your freeze drying sample. Very similar is the story for amorphous samples. Also here we go down, we saw see a small negative peak or super cooling. We freeze the sample to the freezing temperature, we see a slight increase and then we still are not completely frozen. We need to go all the way down to the glass transition temperature or collapse temperature to make sure that the sample is completely frozen and that we do not start with a half frozen sample. Otherwise, our cake will not be very nice at the end. So now what are the options you can use for freezing? You can use a freezer, as mentioned before. And as I said already, I would recommend go to minus 40 at least, or minus 80 would be even nicer. Then you can use a cool bath with ethanol or acetone and dry ice that goes to about minus 75 degrees um, to freeze your samples. And of course, you can also use liquid nitrogen that goes down to minus 169 degrees. 
What we recommend if you work with manifolds and round bottom flasks is that you use a cooling bath, as you can see it in the picture, with dry ice and ethanol or acetone, and you use a rotary evaporator R300 and you rotate the flask. So you can attach your sample, dip the flask into the cooling bath and start the rotation of the rotary evaporator. It will take about five to 20 minutes, depending on your sample and the amount, until your sample is completely frozen and can be attached to the freeze dry. But now what is the benefit if you freeze your sample in this way? If you look on the picture on the right hand side, this is a flask that has been frozen by shell freezing. So what you can see is that the inner wall of the flask is covered with ice. Due to that, the surface of the ice is as big as possible. And for freeze drying, it is very, or for the speed of freeze drying, it's very important that the sample has a big surface because the bigger the surface, the bigger the area where the sample can actually sublimate. And this will have a huge impact on the freeze drying of your sample. So if you look at the graph on the left hand side, we have the orange squares which is a flask that just has been frozen in a freezer by standing there. And we have the blue dots that have been used with, sorry, I, mi I mixed it up. It's exactly the other way around. The blue dots are frozen in a conditional way. So you just have the sample standing in the freezer and freezing and the orange dots are frozen or the orange squares are frozen by rotational freezing. So now if we compare the two, the times, the blue dots and the orange squares, we can see that shell freezing has a sublimation rate that is at least twice the sublimation rate of the conventional freezing method. And this is very impressive and will allow you to freeze dry your sample much, much faster than if you would use conventional freezing just in a freezer. It will create a little bit more work for you, but it will definitely pay off by having a sample that is freeze dried much, much quicker than if you would just place it in a freezer. So I very much recommend you that when you use manifold freeze drying with flasks, that you use shell freezing to freeze your sample. This was very short uh, about the shell freezing for freeze drying. Um, I very much again recommend you to use this method and I thank you very much for your attention. I wish you a lot of success for, with your freeze drying. If you should have any questions regarding freeze drying, please do not hesitate to contact your beauty staff. Um, we will be very happy to help you. I wish you a lot of success with all your work and Talk to you later. Bye-bye.